ready to explore large numbers. Uh, really, really large numbers. Good. I hope so. Um, I am recording a couple of different video lessons to help us explore some of the strategies that we have in mathematics to help us understand and work with very large numbers. But before we get into what some of those strategies are, let me share with you the learning goals for this series of lessons. Our learning goal, I can demonstrate an understanding of place value with whole numbers up to and greater than 1 million. And a language goal that goes along with that, I can talk about big numbers using these words, whole numbers, place value, period, ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, millions, and billions and trillions as well. All right. Our first strategy that I really want to dive into some depth in is place value. Place value is such a great tool for helping um, us human beings whose brains are not really, our brains didn't evolve to work with really large numbers, but luckily uh, our brains are very good at coming up with strategies for dealing with things that are difficult. And one of the strategies that some human brain somewhere came up with was grouping numbers into places and um, breaking down the value of larger numbers using those places. So we call that place value. And we use place value in the form of a table or a chart to help us understand numbers and their values. <laughs> All right, to explore place value in a bit more depth, I thought it would be fun to use some numbers from the Guinness Book of World Records. Okay, so did you know, fun fact, the Guinness Book of Records is the all time best selling copyright book. In fact, between October 1955 and 2002, 94,767,083 copies were sold. So the first thing I want to do is, let's just do a bit of a knowledge check, a skill check, see what we remember from grade four and grade five. And even before that, um, imagine that we write this number 94,767,083 in this place value chart. And I'm going to just X my camera off so we can see the whole chart. Where in that chart would the digits nine and four appear? Take a second, think about where they would appear and then we'll talk about it together. Did you have the nine fitting in the 10 millions place and the four fitting in the millions place? If you did, congratulations, you got the answer right. If you didn't, congratulations, you learned something new and that is something to be proud and happy about. Let's clear that place value chart now and think about putting the whole number into the place value chart. Now, when I do this, I find it easiest to start at the very right hand of the number, the smallest value here, which is now I just copied, I colored right over it. So I'll do an underline instead of a circle. That would be our number three. So I find it easiest to start with the ones, or sometimes we also call that the units, okay? Unit means the same as one. It means a single unit of something, which is a one. So our first digit is a three. It goes in the ones column. Our second digit is an eight, and we are going to put that one in the tens column. Our third digit is very important. It's a zero. And zeros are what we call a placeholder. So it means nothing, none, zilch, but it's telling us that we need to hold that place open. We don't want to just drop that zero and slide the next digit over, which is the seven, because then we mess up our number completely. So we use zero, which means nothing to hold the place because there is no digit in the hundreds place, but we want to make sure that we hold that place so that we don't accidentally slide this seven 
into the hundreds when it does actually belong in the thousands. Now let's keep going to the next biggest digit. That is a six in our 10 thousands column. We move left one more time. We have a seven in our 100 thousands column. And then we remember the nine and four in the million and 10 million column. So I hope that that is a nice review for everyone on how we um, can carefully fill out a place value chart to make sure that we understand what each digit represents in that larger number, and especially the importance of that zero as a placeholder. Okay. All right. Let's look at another number. So I pulled this page with some interesting facts about the 2008 Guinness World Records book, okay? And our task is going to be to pick one number, so one of these, one of these records, and we're going to show it in as many ways as we can, okay? So there's some kind of cool facts here, and if you're so inclined, you can pause the video and read the different facts but I want to focus just on one, and that is this last record on the list, just because I think it's cool. So it is the longest gum, gum, not gun, <laughs> the longest gum wrapper chain in the world contains 1,192,492 wrappers. And the maker of the chain has been working on it since 1965. So this absolutely blows my mind. What this tells me is there is a person in the world who has chewed over 1 million pieces of gum, first of all. Also kept every single wrapper, folded them up origami style, put them together in a chain. And they've been doing this since before I was born. It absolutely delights me to know that someone has been so committed to this bubblegum wrapper chain or gum. I guess it doesn't have to be bubblegum. So I like that one. It tickled my fancy. I thought we would focus on that one. And we're going to go through writing this number out in as many different ways as we can for this part of the lesson before we move on. So let us begin. All right, we're gonna show that number in as many ways as we can. Let's start with standard form. It's standard, it's the way we always write numbers, so we're gonna start there. This is how we write it. 1,192,492. Now, we have got a space here and a space here, all right? Um, this is the format that I will always use to write large numbers with you. It's the format that most ministries of education in Canada ask teachers to use. All right. I know um, lots of people are used to seeing commas here. And that is the way that it's usually done in the United States. But it's not very common in the rest of the world. There's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, in many places of the world, instead of using a period to show a decimal, they actually use a comma. So you can see how it would be very confusing if in your mind, a comma means decimal and you see a number with a comma in it or even two commas in it. Um, but having said that, we do live next door to the United States and commas are what they do there. So if that's what you want to do, I'm not marking you wrong. I'm not going to have an argument with you about it. It doesn't matter to me. I just want you to know how I do it, how the province would like me to teach you to do it, but I'm not going to mark you wrong if you put commas. But we do need to just find some way of saying this is a group of three digits, and now we're going to have another group of three digits. This is what helps our brain understand large numbers. If we wrote them all out with no spaces, we would get very confused very quickly. So. Spaces is what I will always use. If you choose to use a comma, that is fine with me anyways, but just understand the difference. Okay, excellent. So standard form. 
Next, expanded form. Hot tip. If there is a place where most grade six students mess up when writing large numbers in different ways, it is with expanded form, okay? There's just a lot of zeros to keep track of, but let's go through it one by one. When we talked about putting that last large number in a place value table, I said, start from the right, start from the smallest value digit, okay? And we did that and it worked really well because we didn't lose track of anything. We let that zero be a placeholder and we did it perfectly. Now, we are not using the same strategy when we write in expanded form. We're going to do the opposite. We are going to start with our largest value, okay? The digit that is at the very far left. And that would be this one that I've boxed there in green. Now, if we had this number in a place value chart, we would have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. This would be our millions place. And so that number is one million. All right. So then we would move to our next biggest digit. Move one right. And that one is our hundred thousands. Let's look at how this all comes out in expanded form. So we started with our biggest value, this one in the millions place, and we wrote one million. Okay, I'm going to change pen color because it's these numbers are green. So we wrote one million because that is what this number represents. And then we put a plus. When you're writing in expanded form, it's really important to put a plus. Now notice I left these lovely spaces in between each set of three digits. So it's very clear that that is 1 million. I do not wanna sit and count a bunch of zeros that you wrote that are all squished together and see, are there six? Is that 1 million? I want you to put those spaces in, or if for some reason you'd rather put a comma, you may do that, but you your job is to show me that you're spacing those numbers out in groups of three digits. Okay, so we have 1 million plus, and then again, our next highest value digit was that one in the hundred thousands place. So we have 100,000 plus, we move to our next digit, a nine in the ten thousands place. Nine times 10 makes 90. So we have 90,000 plus a two in the thousands place, 2000 plus, can't forget that plus. And then we have our last bit, 400 plus 90 plus two. All right, so you can see so many zeros there, all those plus signs, so many places to kind of lose track of stuff and make a mistake. So when you're writing numbers in expanded form, follow this strategy, start at the left. You can even check them off as you do them so that you know that you're not missing anything. All right, let's clear this first. What other ways can we write that number? Well, we can write it in word form. And word form is just writing, spelling out all the words in the way that we say it in standard form, okay? so. 1,192,492. I do wanna draw your attention to our little friend here, this friendly hyphen in the 92. That hyphen has to go in any number that is in a tens and ones combo. So 92 could be 47, you would write that out, 40, F-O-R-T-Y hyphen, seven, S-E-V-E-N, could be um, 26, whatever. Anything over 20 and less than 100, you need to put that hyphen in there. Now, will I mark it wrong if you forget the hyphen? No. Do you wanna be right? If so, put the hyphen. We don't need it in between four and 100 or anything like that, only in the numbers between 
21 and 99. If you have questions about that, feel free to ask me, but we shall move forward from word form. Place value form. All right, I'm going to vanish as we go through this one. So once again, with our place value, it does really make sense to start with the smallest digit, the ones, or we do sometimes call this units, okay? Instead of ones. So if you say units, don't get, don't get confused. The ones or units, then we're gonna go to our tens, our hundreds, our thousands, 10,000s, 100,000s, and millions.